Good afternoon and welcome to all of our guests on today. We are here on Deborah's Voice and we are so excited. This is your host, Apostle Dr. Duane Jackson, and I'm here today um, on our regular scheduled viewing to share with some of you a important topic. Uh, last week, we did an awesome special broadcast on marriage, and we talked about Let's Talk Marriage. We talked about communication, and then we also talked about um, um, finance. And so on uh, today, uh, all this month, I told you we're going to have many different um, topics that are going to really bless you. So today, we're going to be talking about intimacy. Today, we're going to be talking about intimacy, and it's going to be an awesome broadcast you're going to be tremendously blessed by this broadcast, and I'm excited to let you know what um, um, we what intimacy is all about. All right. So listen, this is the time. Like, share, subscribe. Come on, hit that subscribe button. Tell somebody that Deborah's voice is on. Tell someone that the Deborah's voice talk show is on. He said, even why don't we call it Deborah's voice before we go into our topic? Deborah was a powerful woman uh, in the Bible who had authority and she sat amongst many men uh, when it was not common um, for her to have that role. She was a judge. She was a prophet. She was a wife. Right. She had many different roles, but also she was a leader over Israel. And so God gave me that name for the show. And so that's why we have Deborah's voice. I believe not only did Deborah have a voice, but God is now giving us a voice in this hour and in this time and in this season. So, again, this is your host, Dr. Duane Jackson, and I am ready to talk about our topic for today. Our topic for today is going to be on intimacy. Wow. And I have my book with me. My book is called The Misconception of Love and Relationships. And we're going to talk some out of chapter eight. Um, if for those of you that have the book, we'll be talking a little bit out of chapter eight, but I just want to talk to you about intimacy. All right. And so let's talk about intimacy. You know, when we think about intimacy, definitely we know um, intimacy in just its, its rarest form or simplest form is really the mixing of our life with someone else, right? It's the mixing of our life with another person's life. When we think about intimacy, it's the mingling of souls together, all right? It's the mingling of what souls together, all right? It is also a sharing of hearts, okay? Intimacy is also a sharing of hearts. So when we think about relationships, remember, we need to be able to communicate. That's why we talked about last week how important it was to have effective communication. Because without effective communication, you can never build intimacy. And intimacy comes through, like I said, right, having um, a, a mixing of another uh, person along with yourself, a mingling of souls, a sharing of hearts. Right. But intimacy, let me tell you, is something that we all long for. Why? Because it's how God made us. God made us to be intimate. Right. God made us to be intimate. He made us that way to have a longing. Right. Even the Bible says it is not good for us to be alone. Right. And so when we think about intimacy, it's also into me, I see, meaning that, you know, you want a person to see into your heart, see into your character, see into your moral stature, see into, you know, what you are feeling good, bad or indifferent. Right. It opens you up. All right. So anytime you're talking about becoming intimate, intimacy definitely is opening up of heart and then giving of oneself. Right. So intimacy starts outside of the bedroom. Many times we talk about we want to be intimate with a person or we want to connect with someone um, intimately. It starts outside of the bedroom. Right. So when we first hear about intimacy is not initially sex, but when we first hear about intimacy, it is um, coming into a relationship with a person, sharing that heart, sharing and building a bond with them, making a commitment to become husband and wife. All right. It's many people who out here who are having intimate relationships, but they're not husband and wife. But biblically, so we are to become husband and wife to actually build the proper intimacy that we're supposed to be enjoying in a marriage relationship. All right. So real intimacy is going to make you feel alive. 
Real intimacy makes you feel alive. It makes you feel vibrant. It makes you feel like I've been found. It, it just makes you, you know, light up. It's like, wow, you know, somebody understands me. Real intimacy, you know, will, will touch the depths of the core of your heart. It's going to begin to unveil and unlock spaces in you that you never thought possible, right? It's going to allow you to um, reveal the secrets of your heart. Intimacy will open you up. I always tell ladies, listen, when you are um, walking uh, or dating, rather, you want to make sure that you're opening your heart to that person, but you want to be careful because the more that you open your heart, you're creating intimacy. If you know that this person is going to be your husband or this person is going to be your wife, then definitely you want to make sure that you open yourself up, right? You want to be able to share with them. Why? Because once you get married, there's a thing called pillow talk, right? And pillow talk is something that people lay down and they share the depths of their heart. They pour out, you know, what they're feeling, their brokenness. They pour out if they have, you know, if they're happy, if they're sad, if they're grieving. They pour out all of these areas um, in that space, you know, of pillow talk. And then normally that can lead to sexual intimacy. So remember, there are different types of intimacy, but communication is the thing that takes you into the place where you would develop um, whatever type of intimacy that you're going to fulfill. All right, so once we um, experience true intimacy, it's something that we just, we continue to long for. Why? Because everyone needs intimacy. All right, so I want to talk about this. There are four different types of intimacy that I'm going to talk about on the show today. And I want you to understand um, how important it is when we think about intimacy, right? We think about um, emotional int intimacy first, and that's what we've been talking about. Emotional int intimacy means cultivating a sense of closeness, all right? Emotional intimacy is what is cultivating a sense of closeness and relating to how you and your partner feel, all right? So you're talking about the empathy, the respect, you know, having that communication that opens you up. So you're really saying how I feel, how I feel about you. I love you. Um, you're wonderful. You're great. You're special. I love your characteristics. I love how you look. Um, I love your weight. Um, I love your hair. I love your hands. There's some men that love your feet. Some women, you know, they say, oh, I love the way his stature. Okay, so when you're connecting emotionally, you're, you're sharing what you feel, all right? You're cultivating a sense of closeness by allowing your partner to know what's in the depths of your heart. So, you know, you may be telling them, listen, my heart beats for you. I long for you. I, you know, I, I can't wait to be in your presence. I'm missing you. You're special to me. I appreciate you. Um, you're great. You're kind. Um, I love when you, you know, did a particular thing for me. It was wonderful. Thank you for this particular um, time that we shared together, right? And you know what? There's something else I want to open up to you about. So emotional intimacy is very powerful. And I believe this is the first um, way that people connect emotionally because it's, it's the surface realm that you begin to talk about external things. You begin to talk about ways that you feel. You begin to talk about emotions that are rising, right? Because when you are um, married, this is something that you have to work on. You don't just automatically, you know, wake up and feel tingly every day um, in relationships, but you have to work on them, right? You have to keep your emotional intimacy alive. So when you're, you know, coming home from work, you're sending out messages, texts, calls, um, checking on one another, um, relating how, you know, special they are to you continually. Why? Because you want to keep the emotional bond. You want to make sure that intimacy is built. You don't want to have moments and spaces where you are not having emotional intimacy because it breaks down the relationship, right? It does not allow you to keep cultivating that sense of closeness, right? So anytime that you're using emotional um, um, intimacy, what happens is you begin to connect, 
right? So it makes you want to give yourself. It makes you want to hug. It makes you want to touch. It makes you want to rub. It makes you just want to sit in the presence of your partner. It makes you want to, you know, lay on their chest or lay in their arms or sit together and watch a movie or, you know, hold hands. Why? Because you are building emotional intimacy, right? And so you're making sure that what your emotions are being expressed, right, to cultivate a sense of closeness. Okay, this is very important. Your emotions need to be expressed to what? Cultivate a mental closeness so that you're able to fulfill the assignment that is at hand for you. All right, and that assignment is simply to make sure that you're mixing your life, you're mixing your life, right, in the life of someone else, right? You're mingling souls, you're sharing hearts, you're putting yourself together, one with the other, right? And so this is something that we all long for. So we have to be intentional about emotional intimacy, right? We need to be intentional about emotional intimacy because not only do we want to express it, but how many know that everybody wants to feel it. We want to know it. We want to hear people say, and this is important, especially if you came from a family, maybe that didn't share emotional intimacy. Maybe they didn't talk about, you know, I love you or I care for you or you're great, or maybe they didn't affirm you um, with certain words. And so emotional intimacy is something that you have to build. You have to learn how to cultivate out of your mouth, what to speak, what to say, how to share um, these words and to express what it is that you feel for that spouse, all right? Express what you feel for that mate. Express what you're feeling and make sure that you're connected with them, all right? Mental intimacy is number two. Mental intimacy is connecting to the mind of someone else, all right? Mental intimacy is connecting to the mind of another person, all right? Number two, mental intimacy, all right? Number one was emotional intimacy, right? But number two is mental intimacy. So it's connecting of the minds and the intellect becomes a stimulant. Now, this is amazing, okay? There are people who are driven by different types of intimacy, but, um, um, mental intimacy is where um, a man can be sharing or a woman can be sharing and they're talking and giving information, revelation. They're talking about a particular thing, sharing with you about a particular topic, right? And you are relating. You're getting intimate because why? You're going in depth on this particular topic. You're sharing, you know, every single detail about this particular topic. And guess what? It brings the stimulant. So there are certain topics that bring stimulants to your mind, to your mental state, not your emotional state, but it stimulates the mind. Meaning it makes you think more. It makes you um, aware of something that you were not aware of. It opens you up, right? Mental, uh, emotional, uh, mental uh, intimacy is powerful. Why? Because it gives your mind thinking, right? You ever talk to a person in your relationship, if you're married and you begin to talk and then they share about a certain particular topic and it just opens you up, right? That's mental intimacy. It has you thinking that even after you have left their presence, right? Even after you, you know, you, maybe you're laying down or you're going to the office or coming from the office, even after that, you start to think about what they said to you. That is mental intimacy, meaning that that thing registered in your mind and it played a picture in your mind and it caused you to be open and exposed to something else. Now that's powerful because being intellectual can be a stimulant. Some people love intellectual people. They want a spouse that's intellectual. They want a spouse that can speak. They want a spouse that, you know, can, can what, um, tickle their mind, right? Not necessarily just the emotional side, but they want somebody who has the power to expand them mentally, right? Who can open Open them up to say, have you looked at it from this perspective? Have you seen it in this light? Have you understood it from this angle? Have you tapped into this particular thing? And it stimulates them to where they feel like, wow, this is powerful. And they become connected. They become intimate. Why? Because of a mental stimulant. Wow. 
So you mean intimacy is not just being in the bed. Intimacy is outside of the bed. There are so many aspects that we need to work on so that when we get in the bed, there's a real connection. And so a lot of times there's no connection in the bedroom because we don't understand that we need to be activating these types of intimacy. We need to be unveiling these types of intimacy. We need to be unlocking these types of intimacy in our daily life so that when we get to the bed, room with our spouse, it opens us up, right? So your hormones respond to these different types of intimacy that will open you up so that when you get to the bedroom, there'll be a response, all right? I know I'm talking good today. I'm enjoying this session today because I believe that many people are connecting uh, when it comes to intimacy. All right. Again, like I said, intimacy involves the mixing of our lives with another, right? It, it involves the mingling of souls, right? Between the spouse, right? You and your spouse, you have an intimate relationship, right? It, it involves sharing of hearts, right? So remember, it's not just having sex. We're talking about real intimacy. So intimacy means into me, I see. It means that I'm going to reveal myself. I'm going to open myself up. I'm going to unlock, right? my emotional intimacy first, right? And then my mental intimacy, which is going to bring a stimulation that's going to cause my mind to be connected. It's going to cause my mind to be intellectually stimulated, to grow, to learn more, to look at things from different avenues. See, these are, these are things that draw you to want to be in the presence of your spouse, all right. These are things that draw you in a relationship that make you keep wanting to be around a person that make you keep want to talk and have relationship or conversations with this particular person. Why? Because they stimulate your mind. They stimulate you in ways that you've never been stimulated. They make you think about things that you've never thought about. They make you go into, you know, um, 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 ways of, of seeing things from a different light or a different perspective. So this is really good. I want you to understand this. You know, anytime we're talking about going forward to fulfill a particular, you know, a, a relationship or connected deeper in our relationship, then we have to understand if I want to go forward and I want to make my relationship um, go to the next level, then I'm going to have to practice these things. I need to practice emotional intimacy, right? Cultivating that sense of closeness. Talk about how much I love you, how I like you, how, what you have on internally. I love your character. I love, I appreciate you. Um, what your wearing, what you're dressing like, you know, all of that kind of stuff. You smell good. You know, uh, I'm thinking about you texting, calling, uh, send flowers, send roses, send cards, send cologne, uh, send balloons. All of that is, is emotional. All right. Then the mental, mental intimacy, like I said, is connecting the minds. They're speaking and teaching and giving you insight on something that you did not have insight before, right? Opening you up to a different viewpoint, showing you stuff from a different light. It, it causes attraction, all right? Mental intimacy can cause an attraction. Why? Because you're not looking at the externals. The mental intimacy shows you how powerful the person is. Not externally, but it shows you their internal state. It shows you how they view things. It shows you their thought process. It shows you how they look at things. It shows you how they operate as a person. And it shows you how they think. All right. The way of their thinking. OK, then we talk about spiritual intimacy. So spiritual intimacy is when you are connecting um, by prayer, um, connecting, you know, with God. Right. You're connecting and having a divine connection um, through the Holy Spirit. So the spiritual intimacy is, you know, saying, listen, let's come together um, and let's pray. Maybe that person, that spouse rather is praying for you or you're praying for them or you're taking time to pray together, you're fasting together, spending time cultivated to say, you know what, I want to make sure you're good spiritually. I don't just want to leave you open. I want to make sure you're covered. They cover you in prayer, right? They making sure you're divinely connected. They making sure your life is what? Flowing in connection with God. They're making sure that you're in the proper alignment and perspective for everything that's needed to be able to come to pass. So they work with 
you spiritually, right? Spiritual intimacy to make sure, listen, don't forget, let's pray together. Don't forget what you have before God. They make sure they're, they're being intimate about it to say, listen, tell me your heart. What is it that really um, um, needs to be ministered to? Um, maybe it's about your child. You know, maybe you're both broken about a situation that your child is going through. Maybe you're broken about something that happened to you personally that you, you know, feel like you struggled to open all the way up you know, um, and sharing. So this is a place that you can get um, um, healed through spiritual intimacy. You begin to say, listen, I've been broken. This is what happened to me. This is what I went through. This is what I'm going through. Maybe this is where my childhood was, right? So spiritual intimacy is very important because it gets us in the proper positioning, the proper alignment. It helps us to grow, right? So this is a way that we become intimate, not only with our spouse, but intimate with God. So when you're connected to a spouse that has the ability to what? Pull you closer to God. That's powerful. Why? Because it's going to develop spiritual intimacy. It's going to cause you to go after God. It's going to cause you to have a desire and a, 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 a longing for God, not just a desire and longing for him or her. So you want to make sure that you have both. You want to have spiritual intimacy. You want to have emotional intimacy. You want to have mental intimacy, right? Very important. You want to make sure that you have all of these things together. All right. So we know the main thing that people talk about when it comes to um, intimacy is physical intimacy. That's number four. All right. So number one is emotional intimacy. And that is, amen, dealing with the cultivation of a closeness, right? Relating how you and your partner feel, right? So you're relating feelings, respect, honor, communicating, how they look, how they dress. You know, you love them. You love everything about them. You appreciate them. All of those things are working together. Then you're also talking about mental intimacy. Mental intimacy is that, you know, intellect where they're talking about a way or avenue that opens up your mind to think or to see bigger, different, or another perspective, right? It's connecting you. It's a stimulating you to see differently. Then spiritual intimacy unlocks you because why? You're connecting through prayer, right? You're connecting through maybe reading the Bible together. You're connecting, right, to be able to share uh, issues that you want fixed, things that you want to connect in. And then God gives you a divine connection in the midst of intimacy spiritually, right? Because you're both praying together. You're sharing about it. You're talking about it. You're going into to, you know, um, conversation, but it's also becoming something that you pray or you read your Bible about. Now let's look at this physical intimacy. All right. Physical intimacy is powerful. Why? Because physical intimacy is touch. All right. And some people want to just jump to the touch part, but without the other three, remember, you won't have as an effective time sexually if you have not cultivated emotional intimacy, mental intimacy and spiritual intimacy. All right. You want to be able to what? To make sure that physical intimacy is where we touch. Right. And so, of course, we know that emotion comes in with our touch. Right. So emotional intimacy and physical intimacy will work together. Right. For sexual relations. So anytime I'm going to be sexual with my partner, then I need to make sure that my husband or my wife. Right. Understands how I feel. I want to be able to tell them I love you. I want to be able to take time to appreciate their body. Now, this is very important because sometimes when it comes to intimacy and sexual relationships, people just want to rush to, you know, the main idea. But when you're talking about physical intimacy, foreplay is very important. You need to find specific areas that are going to be um, um, uh, stimulated by your spouse. So your spouse may be able to touch you in particular areas that are sensitive. Maybe your neck, maybe your arms, your breasts, your uh, vagina, your penis, whatever area may be needed. These are areas that need to be touched for stimulant, right? But I find that it's not just going to those particular areas. Sometimes when you're talking about sexual intimacy, it's just the touch. 
You need to be able to rub your spouse. You need to be able to take time with your spouse, right? You might want to dance with your spouse. You may want to sing to your spouse, right? While you're holding them, right? So, so physical intimacy is very important. Why? Because we want to make sure that we keep the connection close, right? So, you know, you may want to rub their head, rub their back rub their feet, right? You want to be intimate and open that spouse up emotionally so that it's easy for them to give themselves to you. How many know it's not easy to be intimate, sexually intimate with a person who has not been emotional, emotionally intimate? So emotional intimacy ties into sexual intimacy. Emotional intimacy ties into sexual intimacy. Why? Because you want to make sure that you're able to what? Touch every area of your spouse. If you are if you are having limitations to say I don't want to touch them here or I don't want to touch them there, then you work on that. You know, some people say, listen, I don't touch feet or I don't do this. You know, you want to work on that. Why? Because you want to build uh, the level of closeness to say, listen, I'll rub your back, I'll rub your feet, I'll rub your neck, you know, uh, like I said, touching the breast, you know, the penis, the vagina, whatever area that needs to be touched, right, for stimulating, it needs to be done so that when the actual act of intercourse comes, you have yourself in the proper alignment and positioning for the maximum release of intimacy, Okay, you want intimacy to be powerful. You want intimacy to be a, a true connection between you and your spouse. And many people grow apart from their spouse because they don't have intimacy. They don't have the emotional connection. They don't have the mental connection. They don't have the spiritual connection. And so when it comes time to have the physical intimacy, then there's no, there's no bond. You're just basically getting in bed, you know, taking care of business and getting back up. And that's not the way um, you should be living your life when it comes to intimacy. Remember what I said, intimacy involves a mixing of your life with another. It involves, you know, the sharing of hearts. You want to be able to share the depth of your heart. You want to be able to open yourself up, right? You want to be able to say, listen, you know, I know God made me to be intimate, right? So you want to let them know, into me I see. This is why I'm becoming intimate with you because I want you to see deep into me. I want you to know who I really am at the core beyond what you see externally, right? So you want to understand that really Really, true intimacy is sharing of your heart, is giving of yourself, right, in time. It's really giving of yourself, right? And then when you really connect in intimacy, it brings you alive right? It brings you a lot. You don't feel like you're ignored. You don't feel heavy. You don't feel weighted. You don't, you know, why? Because you have intimacy and in operation. So intimacy has to have all of these aspects. You need emotional intimacy, mental intimacy, spiritual intimacy, and physical intimacy for the fulfillment of true intimacy to be um, felt. All right. I know today has been good, right? I know that so many of you have sent, you know, posts, you've asked questions, um, and you love to hear about marriage and relationships. And so this is why we're taking time to really share and give you wisdom, give you tips, give you information and insight. Listen, I want you to make sure that you go and order my book, The Misconception of Love and Relationships. The Misconception of Love and Relationships. Only $15. This book is going to bless your life. Today I was talking out of um, chapter 8, Sex and Marriage. Um, it's going to bless your life. Why? Because we need to talk about real issues. We need to deal with real issues in relationships, in marriage. We need to deal with real issues that are going to challenge and change our whole perspective on life. So I want to say to you, I'm so glad that you tuned in again. Please make sure you go and like this broadcast, share it with someone else, let them know, listen, Deborah's voice was powerful today. Deborah's voice gave me some insight. Deborah's voice helped me to learn how to operate in intimacy. Deborah's voice um, really gave me something that I needed to help in my marriage. So I want you 
to share this. I want you to like it. I want you to tell others about this show. It's every Wednesday, I'm sorry, every second and fourth Wednesday, 2 p.m. CST. Every second and fourth Wednesday, 2 p.m. CST. Hit the like button. Come on, somebody. Hit the share button. And most of all, hit that subscription button so you know when we're going live. We always have special events. Last week, we were on with a special guest, and we had an awesome time with my spouse who was with me. Um, so you never know when we're going to do a special edition or add an extra show or come live to do something. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, that like, and then share with others. Join us also on YouTube at uh, Apostle Dr. Dewan Jackson. That's on YouTube at Apostle Dr. Dewan Jackson. You're going to be blessed as you continue to be empowered by the Deborah's Voice Show. This is your host, Apostle Dr. Dewan Jackson. Have a great day.